Photoshop just dropped some amazing new updates that will allow you to make quick changes to your photos just using generative fill, from swapping clothes to compositing people into existing photos, changing the angle of the image entirely and harmonize the lighting. You don't want to miss this. Let's jump on in. In the first example here, let's change the clothing and the overall lighting of this image. So we can go to the rectangular marquee tool and make sure you have your base photo selected. So the original photo selected and just select the entire image. And now you can select generative fill here and you can choose different models. So with Gemini 2.5 or Nano Banana and the Flux Context Pro here, this actually works better with selecting the whole image and you can actually type out an instructional edit to make that change. If you're using Firefly though, you need to select just that portion of the image. That's why I selected the entire image because I'm going to be using Gemini 2.5 to get the best results here. So I'm gonna type in replace the woman's sweater with an oversized fluffy blue faux fur jacket and keep her face the same. It's important to add that extra detail because sometimes Gemini will add some weird things to people's faces if you don't specify it. But overall, it's important to be as precise as possible. So let's go ahead and hit generate. And look at that, here's the result. I think it looks amazing and it even removed the dress and gave her a pair of legs here that are really realistic in my opinion. The next thing I wanna do is make the background purple, the overall lighting purple, and the coat purple. To simplify this after playing around with it, I found that it's better to select the original layer and the generated layer and then convert it to a smart object. So select both the layers, then go up to layer, smart objects convert to smart object. And this is basically like nesting in Premiere Pro. If you double click on this, it'll open up as two separate layers, but now it's one layer. And now what we can do is we can use the marquee tool again, the rectangular marquee tool, which is here, or you can just press M and let's go ahead and let's select this again, generative fill, and let's type out, change the color of the fur coat to purple and change the overall lighting to purple in the scene. And now let's hit generate. Also using Gemini 2.5, AKA Nano Banana. And look at that, here's the result. Here's the before and the after. And all we had to use was a text prompt. I mean, amazing. All right, there's so much more to show you that's really exciting, but first, a brief introduction. If you guys are new here, my name is Kelsey. I'm the creator of Premiere Gal, and usually on this channel, we do video editing tutorials, but we also do tutorials in After Effects for visual effects and motion graphics, as well as Photoshop tutorials. If this video is helping you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And also, this is not sponsored, but if you are looking for graphic templates, 3D models, as well as photos and fonts to use, use in your graphic designs, I recommend Envato because they have the best price on the market. Now I've put a link to my affiliate link below. So if you decide to sign up, it helps support the channel. That's all. And now let's show you some more generative fill effects. All right. So this is generative upscale. So if you have an old image or a photo that's a little bit lower resolution and you wanna upscale it, you can use generative upscale. So this is the thumbnail that I downloaded from my YouTube channel from a video from a couple years ago. And the resolution is okay, but as we zoom in here, you can see you know, it gets pixelated pretty fast and it's not as high of quality that I would like to use before I make some more changes to it. So with the layer selected, you're gonna go up to image, generative upscale and you can choose two times or four times. Let's try with two times and upscale. So let's go ahead and zoom out by pressing Command zero or Control zero. And you can see that it created a new upscaled version on top of our original. So this is the upscaled version, but let's turn off this layer and show you the original. Look at the difference. It even added details in my eyelashes. So now we just have an overall sharper image, bigger image to use to then add designs too. And from here, if you want to, you can also use a text prompt to change this image's camera angle without having to reshoot it. You just use a text prompt. So this is game changing for YouTube thumbnails, right? So if you wanna A-B test 
different angles to see what performs well, you can create new angles of the same image. So that's what we're going to do with this thumbnail. So I'm using the generative upscaled version here. And with it selected, I'm going to go back up to the rectangular marquee tool and just select this entire image and select generative fill. And let's type in change camera angle to a high angle. Click here to make sure that you're using the Gemini 2.5 Nano Banana and generate. And look at that, it made an entirely new angle from the image. I mean, this is incredible. And we can try out as many different angles as we want. We can keep this one here and just turn it off, go back to the original and then select again. And this time let's type in change camera angle to a low angle, generate. And here's the result, we have a low angle. So here's the original, low angle, and the high angle. And you can export these two new angles to test out on YouTube. Now I recommend doing this when your design is done. So that way all you have to do is use generative fill to change the angle of the entire design. All right, so if this wasn't enough, let's take it a step further. So let's say I wanna composite another person in this thumbnail. So here I have a headshot of my editor, Rickard, and I want to add him behind me let's say with his hand on my shoulder for this particular thumbnail. Now, just to make it easier with it selected, let's go ahead and select subject, and then we can select this button here to create a mask, so that way it removes the background. You can try without removing the background, but I find that I get better results when I do that. So now I can select this and position it in the area that I want him to be. Now, before I use generative fill to composite him into the scene, I first wanna harmonize the lighting to match my existing photo in the background. So with the headshot selected, I'm going to click on this new button called Harmonize. And this is just going to analyze the background image of me and apply the same lighting to Rickard's headshot. It's pretty incredible. And look at that. You can see that there's a new harmonized layer. We can turn off the original headshot here. And next, with this harmonized layer selected, we can go ahead and use the rectangular marquee tool again, select the entire frame, and then go to generative fill. And this is where you type in a prompt of how you wanna composite this image into the existing one. I typed out, add a body to the man and place him behind the woman. Place his right hand on the right shoulder of the woman. Do not change the woman's appearance or clothing. And this is important because when I tested this out before, it would change me, add more hair to me, or add an extra button in my shirt, or do something weird. So it's important to include that detail. And then I added blend the man seamlessly into the scene. And now let's generate. All right, so here's the result. I think it did a pretty good job. If we turn off these layers here, we can see this is the original headshot. This is the harmonized layer of the headshot. And then this is the instructional edit that Gemini 2.5 Nano Banana created just using that text prompt. So, you know, if we wanted to post this thumbnail with Rickard behind me, this is a really easy way to do that. So you can imagine the possibilities here when it comes to creating designs and if you wanna place objects or people inside of it. Let me show you another example. I have this background of a soccer stadium or if you're from the rest of the world, a football stadium. And I have this stock photo of this soccer player and I want to place him in this scene. So first off, I'm going to select the subject and let's go ahead and create a mask to remove the background. Now with this selected here, click on harmonize and this is going to apply the lighting of the background to our soccer player. And look at that. It even added a shadow. If it doesn't work out the first time for you, you can always generate again until you get the result you want. It's so freaking cool. So you can see how this can be useful for a variety of scenarios, not just for sport photo editing, but for any graphic design for that matter. So if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I think that these new tools are gonna save you a ton of time when it comes to design inside of Photoshop. And if you wanna learn more Photoshop tips, you can click this video right over here. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Whoop. I can't reach the lens now, it's too far away. Editor, fade to black.